So I have a Google Classroom that my kids use to get in and out of the Google Meet, and that allowed it to be the same link every week so that they could um, find it easily without me having to send out invites. And I pulled up Open Broadcast Studio, which is a free open source software. Uh, and so I am joining my Google Meet. I've got a couple students signing on to help me demonstrate what I do here. Um, but I want to show you I am running this program, Ice Cream Screen Recorder, and that's where I'm getting the video that you are looking at right now. And that is pretty intensive on my computer resources. So this is not a perfect analog of what I would actually have going on. But the goal is to par down what I am using for computer resources, to close Photoshop, to close any background processes. I've got Steam running on my computer as a background thing in Adobe Creative Cloud. Crash those before you start because you want all of the power for encoding and streaming video. So my students are signing on. I want to show you all of these plugins because most of these, 99.9% .9 of these, are things that my county put on my Google Chrome account that I do not want. And so what you're going to need to do before you start a recording or a rehearsal session is you're going to need to go in and you're going to need to log out of your browser and turn off sync. And that is going to allow you to turn off every plugin except for that one Google Meet Grid View Fix, which is going to be what you use to lock everybody in. So turn off sync there, this is the button there so you can see it. Turn off sync, turn off every plugin except for Google Meet Grid View Fix. Google Meet Grid View Fix, there is another one that is not fixed and that's got problems with the Google Meet update. That's going to allow me to enable screen capture mode. And when I click the little waffle and take the X off it and activate it, you're gonna see what happens to my windows. It's gonna lock things into 16.9 and it's gonna take people's names off of their windows, which is essential for doing a play. So there we go, I've done it. Now, they are in a grid and I'm gonna have a third child, Emily, joining this in a moment. See, if I hover over, you can still see the buttons to control them. So you wanna be careful not to hover over while you're doing a recording session. But Emily has joined, Veronica has left and come back, pretending her internet dropped off for demo purposes. And guess what? She's in the exact same place. This is vital because if a student drops off and the grid rearranges, what we're about to do is going to become incredibly frustrating. So Google Meet Grid View Fix is absolutely essential. So I'm going to go into Open Broadcast Studio and I'm going to have a scene created and I'm going to add a media source and that's going to be a window capture. Now I named the window captures after the students because I had dialogue boxes. I had little text boxes that said the names of the characters and had little squares of where I wanted them to go, all laid out ahead of time so that when we got into a record session for the play and we were going to perform, I could just crop and drag and drop their windows on top of their boxes. And you can't have two sources with the same first name or the same name. So I am using Alt-Click uh, to drag and crop the box of the window capture around Veronica. And I'm making kind of a guess here because she does have her camera turned off. So where the background ends is unclear. But ideally, you'd be doing this and all the kids would have their backgrounds on so you could see who was in the window. So Veronica's window is captured and it is cropped to just her, which means that when I am looking at the OBS screen, I do not see Mary Ashley and I do not see Emily. I only see Veronica. And so what I'm going to be able to do is add additional sources and filters. Uh, so a filter is going to let me do things like color correct and change things. But what I wanted to show you here is I have created a second scene with the same copied and pasted window of Veronica, and I have put a filter on it. And when I now go back and forth, that filter is applied to every instance of Veronica's window that is copied. If I want to put an exact copy of one of Veronica's windows, but then put a filter only on that one, what I'm going to have to do is paste a duplicate instead of a reference. A reference refers to another scene. A duplicate copies it, but it's not the exact same one anymore. So you see, I can, without switching between duplicate and reference, crop her window a different way, and that's going to make things a lot faster doing your layouts. If you copy and paste people, and then when you decide to change the layout from 16.9 to 4.3, you crop them, that's fine. Um, but as soon as I start applying filters, that's going to change things. So what I'm doing right now is I'm inserting an image, and I want to show you how easy it is to put an image background. We used virtual backdrops in Much Ado About Nothing. Um, that looked like the sets, but you could also do, we did a, in one of our short plays, we did a fake video chat window that was behind all of their windows and then put frames around them. 
and the log on and log off buttons and mute buttons on top of them. So you can do all of these things with image layouts or you can just use windows on black. Uh, so what I've done now is I've inserted a second window capture and I've named it Emily and I've cropped it to just Emily. Emily and Veronica's sources are pulling from the exact same Google Meet window. Uh, and if I were to close it or change it or shuffle it, they'd all be messed up. So uh, I try once I've done this not to touch the chat box or anything that could cause a slight shift in the position on things. Um, but they are pulling from the same source, two instances, and they're cropped. I can also save this and I can go to work on a different production and you can see my productions saved here. Tutorials we're working in now. Um, this is going to be helpful in case you're working on multiple shows. So that's the basics of what I do. Um, you can change the transitions. You can make it so that uh, either it cuts or it fades or the windows slide around with a move transition. You can do that over on the side. Um, you can record from this panel all the way over here on the right. Um, and you'll see what I pointed to in the variable frame rate at the bottom. It says 30 frames per second. Sometimes it drops down if your computer is under stress. So you want to keep those resources available for OBS. Um, I did on a separate monitor on the same computer run my sound effects directly in. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to start paying attention to is audio capture. And I'll probably do that in a second video because audio capture gets a little complex. Um, and you want to make sure you're doing it right or you're going to have a silent show. But I used that um, OBS virtual camera and I started streaming to a virtual camera and I was able to change my input here on Google Meet so that the kids are looking at what I'm seeing on OBS rather than my webcam. And that's going to help them monitor themselves, make sure their gaze is in the correct direction, all of that stuff. So those are the basics of window capture on OBS. There is a lot more to learn as far as the audio capture. Like I said, it's going to have to wait for another video, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how to get started. Um, it's a steep learning curve, and I had to teach myself it, so I'm hoping that this video will help somebody not feel as overwhelmed as I did.